You're listening to a Big Gym Nation podcast on the Big Gym Nation podcast network. Shout out to Big Gym Nation. Oh yeah, it's time for another episode of the Cool Podcast. We love when this music comes on. We're jamming out to it. Because it's so good. good. Thanks for listening to the show. And thanks for being a patron and all that good stuff. It's episode 20. Isn't that cool? We've done 20 episodes. Could you believe that all started many moons ago? And that felt like that was years ago. Tens and thousands of years ago. But it all started. And (laughs) it was crazy. We won't say what started it all and what the reason was. But we just thought, hey, we'll start a Patreon. Start a podcast. Why not? Everyone's doing it these days. It's our time has come. And it's time for for you to listen. It's the cool podcast. Yeah, it's the 20th episode of the cool podcast. Man. How far along we've come doing podcasts from whence it came, whence it started. Episode number one, we did the pilot episode and then we did episode number two and so on and so forth. And all the different episodes happened, and uh, that's brought us here to episode 20. And it's going to be a good one. I'm excited. Excited to do the show, everybody. We've got a message. This is kind of cool. We got. A, I've been trying to get in touch with this guy for a while. He's the head of the network, Big Jim. Shout out to Big Jim Nation. I've been trying to get in, this, in touch with this guy for a while. Get him back on the show, or just kind of to understand how we do. How we doing? <clears throat> want to know how we doing so he left us a voicemail I'm excited to hear what he's got to say it's been a while since I've heard from him but we've, we're still on the network things are still going good I think so let's see what he's got to say uh, so just let me know I Uh-oh. need money hey this is a Big Jim podcast uh, uh, hey this is Big Jim uh, congrats on the uh, 20th episode Big 2-0 uh, drinking age Hell yeah. Um, I, I want to just, I want to say congrats. I want to say the podcast is doing uh, really great. Um, and I was also wondering when am I going to get the royalty fees for being a part of the Big Jim Nation Podcast Network? I uh, could really use talking about? God, some money. You know, I've been making these podcasts. I've got hundreds of them in my voice memos app. Uh, hundreds, thousands maybe even. Uh, this is a Big Jim podcast, too, so uh, I should get some royalty fees for this as well. Uh, so just let me know. I need money. I'm desperate. Um, please <laughs> send me money. Uh, uh, this has been a Big Jim podcast. What? Royalty fees? What the heck is he talking about? He just kept saying he, just kept saying he wanted money. He needed some money. And, and that we're supposed to be paying some royalty fees? What the heck is he talking about? I don't remember that. But I have got myself into this situation where I didn't read the contract and I didn't see the fine print, which is what happened the last time we got on a podcast network. So I, I'm going to have to get in touch with my lawyers and or I'll probably have to find one first and then see if they can go through the contract and see where it mentions any kind of fees. We do get money from the patrons. And thanks to the patrons for subscribing and giving us money. I don't know if that's what he's talking about. He wants us to give him the Patreon money. Hmm. Um, I'm going to have to figure that one out. That's a head scratcher. And it says he's got a, he's doing a bunch of podcasts. I haven't heard any of these. and I'm not even sure if there are any other podcasts on the network at the moment. So, But it's still a work in progress. We don't have as many resources as the big the big network that we used to be on anymore so it's a, a different kind of challenge another kind of challenge that we've run across 
in doing pods is, well, we start running out of ideas. <laughs> 20 episodes in. Uh, <laughs> and we're still wondering how to do segments. And the segments are still poning me and doing podcasts. I can't figure out how, which ones to do, when to do it, and I need more segments, I think. So I thought this, just to start it out, we haven't done a lot of self-care when it comes to working on the podcast. We've just been doing it. We haven't talked about it. This is a sort of its own thing. It's a little pod maintenance. What are some segment ideas? 20 unique pod segment ideas. Podcast segment ideas with examples. Maybe the 21st century, but the tendency for humans to tune out during long stretches of un uninterrupted information is still going strong. That is true. Um, that's some feedback that I've gotten about the, this podcast. So um, that's why I tried to get some more segments in there. That's why it's important to structure your podcast. We've got a strong structure, a strong base holding everything up. The base. Speaking of base, we did mu a music bonus episode. Go check that one out. Podcast segments are a sectioned off part of your show that uh, is dedicated to a certain topic or activity. Similar to how radio shows have a live call-in segment or a news update. When we do the news update, it's called What's News. And it's not the weird news anymore. So, should you add segments to your show? It's got a little chart here that's kind of fun. It just says intro, main content, outro. And then it sort of highlights in the main content, good segment locations. <laughs> this is from buzzsprout.com. Good segment locations in the main meat of the show. Virtually every podcast episode has three main segments. An intro, main content, and an outro. That's kind of cool. Adding more segments to the basic structure isn't required to make your podcast engaging. And plenty of long-form shows feature one continuous conversation. Consider adding segments to your podcast if your stats indicate a indicate listener drop-off at a certain point in your episodes. And I wish that we had some stats for that. Maybe I need to get start getting into pod stats and figure out who's listening and start sending them messages and say, Hey, why don't you need to listen to this last episode? What's going on? You have a show that covers several unrelated topics, and that's what we do. <laughs> we tend to switch gears often, and we do both of those things. We're switching gears, and people are already tuning out. It's time to reel them back in. So we need to make the podcast more interact interactive and dynamic. Here are some ideas. 20 unique segment ideas. Uh, no noteworthy mention, shine a spotlight on standout companies, solopreneurs, influencers, artists, technology, technology, and travel spot. Uh, we do that. We got the gusher. That's a that's a that's entrepreneur. He's one of our favorite guys. We're going to talk about him today or li listen to one of his videos. We got the podcast plug. We could do that for sure. Talk about what's... Uh, well, we do that. It's <laughs> the podcast roundup. So we got that covered. Listener voicemail. We did that. That was from Big Jim. So that's covered. Games and trivia. Hmm. That's an interesting one. Game segments. Uh, but it's only me, so it's kind of hard to do games with just one person. Question and answer. So we did interviews. Maybe we need to do some more interviews. Uh, affiliate or sponsor? Okay. Maybe do some affiliates. Creates a personal touch that adds credibility to the products and services you promote. We start promoting some products, doing some ads. It's not a bad idea. Get some ads in here. Get some extra revenue. Hmm. Put that on the list. Some ads. What about tips and tricks? Include a free tip or useful tidbit within each episode. Free advice and content is an excellent audience builder and a way to foster trust among your listeners. Free content. It's not free over here. I just keep coming back to the old bottom line. Featured quote or expert, and I'm reading all this whole podcast of me reading stuff, so I don't think I need to read anymore. In fact, I probably need to read less and just get into the next segment. A flashback. Uh, flashback. Time travel with episode flashbacks to reemphasize points you made in the past. Update outdated information and recycle old content. I guess I could start doing that. Recycle some old stuff. Uh, that's kind of what... That could be fun. Listening to some old episodes. <laughs> People would like that. A sneak peek of premium content. That could be cool. 
sneak peek in the, on the next episode of the cool podcast. It's this thing. So that's a, that's a good idea. Remember your target audience, stay relevant, create smooth transitions, and add value. It's from Buzzsprout. See, so there's some other ones. We'll just go through these. Ask the audience. Latest news in your field. It's podcast roundup. A listener comment, tweet, or review. Engage your audience on social media. Keep track of noteworthy comments, reviews, and tweets. That's a review segment. Random fact, hashtags, product review. That could be cool. Review some products. Pop culture, music culture review. We've done some of that with the recommendation. Guest episode recap. End your show with a brief brief review and give your audience a few bullet points of your content's most salient takeaways. Download segment list and tips. Well, that's that's kind of helpful. We'll do some, try to incorporate some of these ideas. And a little spoiler spoiler alert: we actually did incorporate a new segment idea. And like most segments, they start off and maybe it's a little rough at first. So this is the first go around of this segment. Let's check out. It's a new segment. It's the cool quiz zone. It's the cool quiz zone. Doing some quiz. Doing some quizzes. I believe someone mentioned this at some point. Even if you do a quiz. So I think that was on one of the suggestions too. Doing uh, games. So this is a cool quiz for Mental Floss. We love Mental Floss. They've got amazing facts. This is a quiz. Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? This is some good quiz music. It's like, wants to be a millionaire. Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? The man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. And so we know Teddy Roosevelt, he swung a big stick. So I think the Game of Thrones guys mostly had swords. And we got, and it looks like we got that one right. Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor and it can never be used to hurt you. Hmm. That sounds like the Game of Thrones guys definitely wear armor. And have shields and stuff. Teddy Roosevelt. Never forget what you are. Sounds like a Teddy Roosevelt quote, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's G-O-T. Oh, crap. <laughs> The only way to keep your people loyal is to make certain they fear you more than they do the enemy. Hmm. Who said it? Game of Thrones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones? Teddy Roosevelt could have been Game of Thrones. Be the big fat guy. The only way to keep your people loyal is to make certain they fear you more than they do the enemy. Keep your people loyal. Hmm. Sounds like a Game of Thrones thing. Um... Let's try Teddy Roosevelt instead. That was Game of Thrones. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character. Too easily words of war become acts of war. That's Teddy Roosevelt. Now what's the answer? <laughs> it's not telling me the answer. Let's see, 89% Teddy Roosevelt, 11% GOT. I guess it'll tell me at the end. Who said it? Game of uh, Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? He is evidently a maniac, morally no less than mentally. He is evidently a maniac. Hmm. Morally, no less. Hmm. Let's go Teddy Roosevelt on that one. I think we got that one right. <laughs> Finally, tis a big and beautiful world. Most of us live and die in the same corner, where we. Where we were born and never get to see any of it. Tis a big and... I don't think Teddy Roosevelt would say tis. My country tis of there. Unless he was singing that song. Let's do Game of Thrones on that one. It's like we got that one right. Okay, so we, we it is telling us the answers. We've missed quite a few of them. Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? We need to keep our faces steadily toward the sun. You can change the simile... To keep our eyes to the stars, but remember that our feet have got to be on the ground. You can change the simile. What the hell? <laughs> I don't think Game of Thrones guys would say that. We need to keep our faces steadily, steadily towards the sun. 
You can change the simile to keep our eyes to the stars, but remember that our feet have got to be on the ground. That's weird. That sounds like a Teddy Roosevelt thing. I don't think Game of Thrones would say that. Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? The light has gone out in my life. <laughs> sounds Game of Thrones. This is dark and depressing. Oh, it's Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> oh, no. Who said it? Game of Thrones or character? This is funny. Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt or Game of Thrones character? Hodor. <laughs> That's Game of Thrones. What if Teddy Roosevelt said Hodor? That'd be funny. Let's see. I got a lot of these wrong. Let's go back and review some of these. Uh, got some of them right. That's cool. Too easily words of war become acts of war. That's uh, Teddy Roosevelt. But that could be Game of Thrones. Uh, never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor. That's Game of Thrones. It's kind of hard to tell if I got these right or wrong with this, this little app. So anyway, that's the quiz zone. It's the quiz zone. Time to move on. Next segment. Getting too boring. Need to move on. Keep the audience interested. Let's do the next segment. Why don't we? It's a fun one. It's the 20th episode. Yay! It's the 20th episode. Let's do a classic segment. Haven't done this one from from done. We haven't from the done this one in a while. And it's one of our favorite ones. It's the podcast roundup. Yeah, it's the podcast roundup. Let's do it. Let's kick it off. Let's do it right now. The word. Go to thoseguysfromwichita.com and click the <laughs> Patreon link. Thanks, buddy. Well, in Wichita, Kansas. Probably Roger, Dad. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Hey, Sarah. Some people heard it, some saw it, but the big question is, what is it? <laughs> Those guys <laughs> did it wrong. A loud boom, Wichita police say it was not an explosion. It's those guys from Wichita. Push the button! It sounded like a bomb. It's those guys from Wichita. One thing that is clear, the loud noise heard by many. In Wichita, those guys from Wichita. <laughs> what is that? I'm over here, though. <laughs> it's those guys from Wichita. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. That's easy. It's those guys from Wichita. I'm going to make uh, Skin Man go even though he's not ready to read. That's fine. Thing. He can Up read. in the corner, it's Skin Man. Yeah. Wow. Good evening, all you nimble fingered do-gooders. The time has come to put away your mashed potato-based theories and fill up your Dixie cups <laughs> with a splash of truth. We are those guys from Wichita. <laughs> Now here to hang Those brain, guys from it's Conrad in Mexico. Can't let that go, man. Huzzah! Brain, no, Huzzah! There you go. <laughs> I love it. Huzzah! Ah, thank you. Huzzah. Thank you. Really good. Now back to your limerick writing, and, and I'll, I'll do the rest of the introductions. <laughs> I like Got that. It. Those guys uh, from Wichita. A very surprising uh, day here at Those Guys from Wichita Studios at <laughs> Dick Around Studios. Uh, it's cool. Not only did Andy show up from yeah. off the road. Yeah. Woo! He's wow. here. He's he parked his big rig right out front. Saw it. So, uh, Fuck it. coming home. Plenty of room to turn around. But knowing that Andy was coming, some, somehow, mental math, mental brain math, Chip knew Andy was going to surprise us and said, Chip Fuck it, I'll one up him. Chest. So, Chip's here. Yeah. 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 And even better, smoothies here. Yeah. 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 Smoothies yeah. here. Yeah. All right. Yay. And he I brought cheeseburgers. Any other day, smoothies, sunglasses would have been the lead to this story. I know, yeah. and he and he knew that when he wore them in. And they're no, different. They're sunglasses. different every week. Disappointing, disappointing. I was I was hoping to get a big big uh, hurrah <laughs> for my sunglasses, nah. and to have an ice cold Dr Pepper. There's none left. Oh. But I got Kool Aid. Oh. I'm stealing your kids Kool Aid. <laughs> I got a warm Dr Pepper. Up so the... this is those guys from Wichita. It's a show. I went to Podbean. I said enough of these celeb pods. Let's go back over to Podbean. Get some of these weird pods on the pod bean. 
and looked at the top comedy podcasts, and there we have those guys from Wichita. Let's see what else they have to say, and then we'll get on to the next pod. <laughs> this is pretty good so far. Uh, I got Kool-Aid, man. It's delicious. Fruit There's punch. about 16 flavors left in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to try them. I'll get you a <laughs> pop here in a minute, but Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys came. I'm glad you showed it up, Chip. It's an incredible surprise. Um, in fact, Incredible. I'll reward you with something out of this bag. <laughs> That's a yeah, treasure. Uh, Dig reward. deep. <laughs> it's a surprise. Dig no, deep. Uh, uh, my birthday's coming up next week. And, oh. Uh, hey, man, let's turn you up. Yeah, turn my, it up. Yeah, my birthday. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I go. got some mic. Turn technique. up I'm number sorry. three. My birthday's coming up next week, and uh, I didn't have time or money to do anything, and so I said, fuck it. I'm going to come up to the show. I haven't seen everybody. For gas ever. is free. He got oh, gas. Oh, happy Randy. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, when is your birthday? Right. He's like coming up. But when August is it? 9th. Yeah. That's like four days from yeah. now. Well, I'm pretty happy to lead into it. 26 you know? is a really big year. <laughs> I remember <Yeah>. that. <laughs> I remember 26 also. Yeah. And Andy, did you just pop in, you know, in between stops or something? What's going on with you? Yeah, home time. We get home time now? Home time. Is it weird that Chip looks better and Andy looks like he's been on the road for a month? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do look good. Yeah, Chip Thank looks you. great. Whatever Chip glow- looks great. It's those guys from Wichita. Andy and Chip surprise the gang. Microwave moment with Bank of America. Short hair lady from Upload. Andy reads. Andy Re- uh, Short hair lady from Upload. Andy reads. This is Patreon week, so if you want to hear the bonus show, click here. Andy gets chipped. Wow. And they were live. They did a live. They did a live video. The guy's vaping in there. <laughs> I love the intro too. I added some of my own sounds to it, as you know. But it had a bunch of crazy sounds, so that that's that one's pretty fun. We'll have to come back, check that one out, though, unless they say some offensive stuff. Yeah, in the shower, I can do it right here. It don't matter. Whatever. We'll get a trade or what? But, you know, I got, since I've been in the truck. You've uh, made $130,000. Yeah. So we get it. Yeah. <laughs> they got a cool studio. They got a cool studio with a big table and microphones and all kinds of stuff. Looks like they've been podcasting for a while, so that's cool. It's those guys from Wichita. All right, what's the next podcast? Let's check out... Let's check this one out. Some people might be interested in this. It's the Ho-Town podcast. <laughs> See, look how cool that is. It just records my voice. Hey, guys, welcome to Bible study. If you could all open up to John 14, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm talking? just kidding. I have my mom here. Say hi. Hi, there. Oh, my God. All right. Can I get a men ain't shit real quick? Say men ain't shit. Say what? Say men ain't shit. Men ain't shit. Okay. She just flicked me off. What? <laughs> All right. That's enough. Roll the intro. Let's roll the intro. Do you know where we're going today? Hotel <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Hotown. Hello, and welcome to the fifth episode of Hotown. <laughs> My name is Allie, and I will be your tour guide for the streets today. What the <laughs> fuck is up, guys? It's been our usual two weeks. I feel like I should say that again because I get a lot of comments on days that I don't upload, and they're like, Uh-oh. you forgot to post. No. What? Episodes are every other Sunday, so this hey, that's episode... Like a- it's like the cool stream. It's going up the 9th of August, and then the next one won't be until the 23rd. I would love to post every week, but that's a lot. I'm a college student. I have my that's own homework and my own shit and my own like social life to worry about. I obviously will throw in more bonus episodes here and there, but for now, it's every other week. Sorry. Once again, I'm filming in another right. place. I'm it's home. Fine. I feel like I've said this so much, She's but I'm home. saying it again. I'm in the process of moving, so I'm home for two weeks because I don't move into my apartment until the 14th of August. I can't wait to settle down. She's my old apartment complex was so shitty. Oh, Everything was no. like run down. The management was just a bunch of college kids, and they were so bad. They wouldn't fix anything. My dryer was broken. For like the last four months of me living there, it, it would take like four, 
full cycles for oh, one load of laundry, laundry to dry. But whatever. So yeah, what? going back the 14th, Lee is going to Gainesville a little bit after that. So we'll be <laughs> only two hours away. I think it'll be a lot easier to record. Things will go a lot smoother. We can promote way more when we're together. I had an idea of printing a fuck ton of posters and just splattering them all around <laughs> Tally and Gainesville. So if you see one, <laughs> send it to me. That'd be so dope. <laughs> She's a Florida, a Florida late, a Florida gal. Um, Lee, I guess, is the producer. So it's produced by Lee. So they're gonna plaster a, a ton of posters around uh, Tallahassee and Gainesville. Uh, let's see the description here. Ho town for the people. Uncensored, raunchy. Allie talks about her sexual experiences and story times, coupled with tips and advice. A must listen. A must listen. Stay hoey. And in this episode, she confesses about her newly found simp life. Gives the citizens of Ho town advice on communications, spitters versus quitters, and risking the friendship. Oh no, what could that mean? <laughs> Wrap it. <laughs> uh, Wrap it before you tap it. <laughs> Is one of the episodes. So that's that's what's going on in Podville. Oh lord. Um, we've also got... Man. Man, oh man. We've got other pods. Let's see what else other segments we've got lined up make sure we get we get out of here at a reasonable hour let's do one more pod this guy we've mentioned him he's got a podcast he hasn't updated it in a while but it's our friend charles beckwith and we've talked about all of his gushers but now he's in the podcast roundup because he's got the american fashion podcast Let's check it out. This episode of American Fashion Podcast <laughs> was recorded on March 9th, 2020. And uh, it was the first episode we recorded in the new Mouth Media Network studio wow. at the edge of Madison Square Park, uh, oh. just down the street Mouth from Media. where our previous studio was, on, uh, both on West 25th Street, basically. It was a strange feeling. We uh, we have to go down a kind of long hallway from the reception area to where the studio is back in the building. And so we went up to, to get Mary from reception and um, there were no receptionists there. And, and kind of what we pay for at the building is, is we pay for good uh, reception for professional appearance. And there was no receptionist there. Oh, and no. uh, that just seemed pretty strange. And at the same uh -oh. time... Um, the grocery stores were starting to have panic buying going on. They, they were really full of people. And um, basically the, the quarantine happened just a few hours after we recorded this. And um, I'm not sure that when we'll ever be back in that studio again. It's Whoa. just a whole strange thing. It's weird. And uh, this quarantine. conversation that we had in this episode is about the supply chain and I think maybe now, today, weeks and weeks later, as, as this COVID-19 thing has gone on, maybe the answers would have been quite different because of how different the context is for how difficult it's been to get things into the country and how difficult it's been to get things out to customers. I think the supply chain and the logistics chain is very much in question and people want it's to crazy uh it's very boring <laughs> what he's talking about the supply chain and fashion so we tried to get a new studio but the quarantine hit and he said hey where's my receptionist meanwhile the receptionist was quarantined so this was uh, on may 23rd is the last episode of the american fashion podcast so I guess he's too busy doing gushers now and instead of doing the podcast. Let's do the next segment, everybody. What's the next segment? It's a segment we love. <laughs> mm. 
review this. This is a classic segment. This is one that we've been working on, workshopping, trying to figure out what the, what the H, what the are we going to do about this segment? Because we started it, we created it, it's the review this. It's about weird reviews, we've done a few of them, and then I thought, you know what, I don't really know what kind of reviews to do. Now, it takes a lot of work to find weird reviews. But, I've been able to find some. Whew, thank God. To, uh, thanks to some recommendations, some cool recommendations about some stuff to look up. So, I went over to England because I thought they might have some interesting reviews over there. Checking out some fast food reviews from over in England. This is KFC Nottingham. The Sheriff of Nottingham, friggin' uh, Robin Hood is over there. Dion, Dion Shaw says, this is the KFC in Nottingham. Diane Shaw says, rude staff to start. I'm not going to do English accent. I guess I could. Rude staff to start. I got a gravy mega box. The lid was not noy secured properly. So when taking it, it out of the box, the lid just came out, came away. And, it, and I was covered in hot gravy. Oh, no. I ran to the counter to ask to ask for napkins, to which the member of staff initially tried to ignore my pleas for assistance. Then Brashley just says, You have to ask her, indicating another member of staff. It wasn't until other customers raised their voices in concern for me, as the gravy was burning my leg, that he begrudgingly tossed me a grand total of three napkins. <laughs> oh no, without interest or care. I won't be back here and would strong advise others to to deve the additional five minutes away to the next available KFC. To drive the additional five minutes away to the next available KFC. Hmm. Well, that's not good. She got, got dumped gravy on her. They didn't help. That stinks. Where are some other KFCs? The good one. <laughs> you can said you can drive five minutes away. The KFC in Nottingham. Are there any better reviews of the better KFC in Nottingham? Here's one. There's a lot of KFCs in Nottingham. In Nottingham. Can't think of anything wrong with it, and it has a good system, so it's pretty safe. Was starving, so nipped in here for a boneless banquet with my daughter, who's seven. There's enough food to share, that's why I always buy this meal. The gravy is the best. <laughs> Unless they spill it on you. Gravy is the best. Uh, but wish they brought back the fries. But hey ho, for six forty nine pounds, I'm nibbling. Excellent service as well from Sophie. I had only just paid and my food was ready. Really quick and efficient service. We'll be returning. That's the good KFC. There's a lot of KFCs in Nottingham. I think the food wasn't fresh when I went there last time. Like they just reheat the leftovers from the day before. Really bad experience. Oh no. There's good reviews and there's bad reviews. That's one thing you know about reviews. One star is actually too many. Definitely a place to avoid. I understand KFC isn't healthy, but I had maybe two tiny shreds of lettuce in my zinger and half a large Pepsi Max. And there's some pictures. And then there is exactly one to two shreds of lettuce on the zinger. That's too bad. You need your lettuce. Dang, people are don't like this one either. So maybe this isn't the good KFC. Maybe it's the one over here, way out of town in Snyton. <laughs> That's the fun thing about being in England. You can't don't know how to pronounce things. Um, they have all kinds of crazy names. This is an interesting place. The Internet Reptile in Nottingham. It's the reptile store. Everyone at Internet Reptile has been fantastic. We have met them a few years ago, and they were patient, helpful, enthusiastic about their business. They've been remarkable during the pandemic, and I've never had any issues with them. From buying in person, click, and collecting, or receiving in the post. They're passionate about reptile welfare, and do an amazing job of ensuring, ensuring animals are put out before money. Animals are put before money. We regularly purchase live food with zero problems. Have bought all equipment and decorations as well as buying and rehoming reptiles from them. 
would always recommend and can't wait to see you in person again from Debbie. It's the Internet Reptile. Uh-oh, zero stars from Aaron. Quick to take your money, but when delivery is not delivered, refuses to refund money back to you. Dang. But then they got a response from the owner. Interesting. Okay, we're not going to read any more about reptiles, because we had some other ones picked out. The KFC in Nottingham. Uh, <laughs> And then another bad experience there. Steph says, I ordered a meal on the order born. On the order born. I don't know if that's some kind of English thing. Ordered a meal on the order born. My ticket didn't come through, but I put my hand on the receipt printer and came out with a receipt. I didn't realize this receipt wasn't mine until the waiter called another number. So I approached him and explained to him. They made me wait and treated me like as if, as if I was trying to do something bad. No, I hate when that happens. And you think that the people working there think you're trying to do something bad? I showed the manager with I showed my manager my the card and I used to pay and asked him to check as as well the machine because it wasn't working. He responded that he knows. When he found out I was right, they tried to give me a cold meal, which have been waiting all that time. I asked the waitress to change the drink. She threw all the drinks on the floor and told her colleagues I threw the drink on her. What? <laughs> I just asked the manager to check the cameras and he will find out what happened. I will never go back to that shop again and I'm not going to make an official complaint. Disrespectful staff. Even the manager was unable, unable to apologize about their mistakes. That a shim. 5-12-2019 around 9pm. Steph. Dang, that's the same one that spilled the gravy on the other person. Sheesh. <laughs> this is, uh, okay, so going over to another town from going into Lesta, which is spelled differently. It's spelled L Li like it's pronounced Leicester. You gotta figure out why they pronounce things like that in such a weird way. <laughs> it's pronounced Lesta. Uh, this is the, of the five guys. Uh, this is from P. Diddy Pop Esco. It says, this was... This was pants for five guys. I was not happy and the service was poor, really poor. Couldn't even get the simple order right. The food was thrown together and was bloody expensive. Nothing worse than shelling on food. I don't even know why I'm giving it a three, but I have yet to try the burger, even though I'm traumatized. <laughs> I don't know. And, pe and this person posted a picture of what looks to be a hot dog. Some jalapenos and cheese and stuff. That doesn't seem too bad. I guess I would eat that if I ate, ate stuff like that. Hot dogs, that is. And of course, over there, they call them chips. Someone else in one of the comments said that there's too many chips. Give you a big bag of them. Well, that's how they do over at Five Guys. Hashtag sponsored. How are we doing on time? We got time for another review. Uh, this one's kind of funny. <laughs> this, is, this is about Cafe Nero. And this is over in Lesta. This is from Anna Patrizia Pellegrino. She says, it is a coffee shop located in the center of the city. As soon as you enter, you are in a bright, furnished and furnished environment, and the staff is very kind and helpful to the customer. It's got three stars here. The plaque written on the entrance door suggests that entering there, you can enjoy an aromatic and a good cup of coffee. Made in Italy, quote unquote. But unfortunately, this is not always the case. I am more coffee. One should go to Italy and no in England, Germany, Spain. At this point in my review, I want to clarify that I am mentioning the coffee blend that is produced and roasted in Italy. Here in England, where I live, we must resign ourselves to drinking, like everyone else, the coffee we are served. <laughs> I, just, I just have to turn to all Italian coffee lovers to resign themselves and without making unnecessary comparisons with our unmistakable Italian coffee. Not really sure what the point she's trying to make. The coffee wasn't very good. It sounds like she's Italian. Italian. Anna Patrizia Pellegrino. She went to Cafe Nero and said this is no bueno. <laughs> but we drink it anyway because we're not in Italy. We're in England. In case you didn't notice. <laughs> Whew. This is fun. Isn't this fun? The review segment is going quite well. Oh man. 
I think that'll do it for the review segment. Let's do the next segment. We love this one. We love it. It's your gusher is gross. Your gusher is gross. We listen to Charles Beckwith. He's a gusher guy. So we're going to do a little bit of everything. We're going to look at a gush. We're going to listen to a gush. Which one should we do first? Leave it down in the comments below. Um, oh, crap. Um, okay, let me make sure I've got... Sometimes he's got two videos because his video is cut off. Let's do a quick gush from the man himself. We love these videos. Necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> We've all heard it, I've heard it, you've heard it, everyone's heard it. But I find it curious that no one ever talks about the father, the daddy, the Y chromosome. <laughs> the Who's the father of invention? Well, I got the DNA test from Jerry Springer himself and it turns out you are the father. <laughs> no, 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 no. Desperation is the father of invention. Desperation, you see, is a good thing. Think of all the things in your life that you're frustrated with on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm, do you actually do anything about it? Typically, no. no. It's only <laughs> when you reach a stage of desperation when you just can't take it anymore, when you've had enough, when you yeah. can't live another day doing whatever it is, that's when big change yeah, that's happens. It. That's when you get out of your comfort zone. Try getting out of your comfort zone when everything is going smoothly. Good luck with that. But when the shit hits the fan, right. when things start to get extremely desperate, then the willingness to face the unknown becomes much greater. When desperation outweighs desperation. fear, action occurs. Desperation draws a line in the sand that frustration doesn't provide. Desperation gives life to ideas that were previously off limits. Desperation mm. pops the bubble of self-imposed limitations. Desperation is the father of invention, whether mm. it's reinventing yourself, a business, or the world around you. Because when you're desperate enough, you'll do whatever the hell it takes. Those calls you didn't want to make, you'll make them. Hell, you'll show up on their doorstep. Those people you didn't want to reach out to, you'll not only reach out to them, you'll shed your skin, be authentic, and start resonating. Turn into a that bug. hard road, that long road you wanted to avoid because it was the only road, you'll sprint down it nonstop like a pack of wolves are on your heels. And that's some powerful stuff. Preach it. Preach it. To act outside. Desperation forces no, you two to videos. act outside videos the box. Are too long. Desperation kills procrastination. Desperation is the shortest distance to immediate action and to change. The key is not to avoid desperation, that feeling of desperation. The key that is to recognize win? it's there, face it head on, and use it. If you're feeling desperation right now, use it, use it, use it. Take action. Use it. Pop your bubble, run down that long, difficult road you've avoided, sprint down it, and don't look back. Thumbs up. Keep going. Gusher.com. Desperation forces you. Man, thinking back to uh, when we started the podcast, that was a moment of desperation. Thinking back all 20 episodes ago. Man, he's got a point. It makes you do some crazy stuff. Um, hopefully you don't get to that point where you're feeling desperate and crazy. But in this, in times like these, that's just what happens. So, we're going to look at a quick gush and then we're going to end the show. This, is, uh, this one's rather weird. It's not, a, it's not a Chris Joyce and it's not a Charles Beckwith. It's called Go No Go. Go No Go. Stop worrying. Hi there, I'm David Levesque. Thanks for clicking on my video for Go No Go here on Gusher. Go, Go No Go. Go is a app that does a 30 second COVID-19 test 
by mm. recording your voice and analyzing your voice and looking for the virus in the sound of your voice. Mm. We're building a world-class team of amazing people who have experience in business, healthcare, and software development. And mm. if that's you, we'd be interested in hearing from you. We have a global team, like I mentioned, and it's growing fast. So thanks so much for your time and attention. And I'm sure you have lots of questions. Stay tuned a lot of questions. to our post here on Gusher. You can also visit gonogo.org. Check Go it out. Go. And thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. We've got a lot of questions. Uh, they're using the sound of your voice. Meeting in person is high potential health risk. Everyone is wondering, should I go? Diagnostics for COVID-19 are inaccessible, inaccurate, and unaffordable. GoNoGo provides an affordable, accurate, and accessible COVID-19 test in a mobile app using machine learning analysis of a person's voice. We sell to governments, hospitals, and employers. 170 million tests have generated over $5 billion in the last months for test makers. As the world economy reopens, we expect there to be at least that many tests performed. After COVID-19, our platform will adapt adapt to diagnose other health health conditions. And they need a lot of people on this team, including the chief medical officer, research research science liaison, this chief audio scientist. So they're going to use an app to see if you have the the virus. I don't know how that works. If you go to their website, here's the picture. COVID-19 test via mobile app. T- accepting beta users now. <laughs> go, no, go. Stop worrying. 98% accuracy. Thumbs up means you're safe to go. Thumbs down means it's time to talk to your doctor. Per study completed in Italy, June 2020. Record your vo- voice for 30 seconds. And it's got a picture of a... Someone, a face talking, and you can see their throat inside, like a little illustration, and then sound waves coming out, and it's pointing to the sound waves and said COVID-19. In less than a minute, you could help yourself and the world recover from COVID-19. We are accepting 100 beta testers between July 20th and August 10th. Contact us to learn more by phone and email below. So give them a call. Thanks for your love and support. Let's go. Go, no, go. So I guess you need to... They need people who have the virus. Call them up and see if their app works that detects your voice to see if you have it. I guess it's detecting whether you're like, "Uh, (coughs) I got it. I don't feel good. (laughs) That's not funny. It's not funny, to. but what is it testing exactly? How is it knowing that other than maybe your throat is a little scratchy, you just don't sound very full of life, but. And do they comparison for when you're feeling healthy to compare it to? That's another question. Many questions. That's about all they provide here. Go, no, go. Machine learning voice analysis to detect SARS-CoV-2 in 30 seconds. So this is just a weird idea that this guy had. <laughs> David Levesque. He's, an, he's a passionate innovator in sales and marketing. So he doesn't have anything other than here's an idea and let's see if people will let's see if people will join the team. He's got a couple followers. All right. Well, it's been a fun show. It's episode 20. Thanks for listening to the show. It's time to do the wrap up. This is the official wrap up segment. I haven't really gotten the hang of this part, but been fun we listened to some fun fun pods we did the review segment that was cool we finally did it we did a good job i think and we kind of learned some weird info from big jim about he needs money and so we're gonna have to log off here and check out that contract and see check out the gams on that buzz friend and check out the contract and see what it says to make sure we're in the everything's going okay. So anyway, thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We'll be seeing you next week when we do another episode. Do some more segments, do some other stuff. It was fun. 
Thanks for listening. Be seeing you next time on the Q Podcast. Bye bye. What is up, every? What is up, every? Hey, I'm watching the cool. Hey, I'm what? You have just listened to a Big Gym Nation podcast on the Big Gym Nation Podcast Network. Hope you liked it. Shout out to Big Gym Nation. I had an idea of printing a fuck ton of posters.